Welcome to this musculoskeletal assessment introductory module. My name is Dr. David Dutcher and I'm going to be guiding you through these presentations. There are many goals and objectives that I want you to realize during this series of courses. First, on completion, you're going to be able to demonstrate knowledge of site-specific musculoskeletal anatomy and physiology, define the hippie roan model of assessment, define the SOAP, SOAP, and OPQRSTUV models integrated into musculoskeletal assessment, explain the rationale underlying musculoskeletal examination techniques, differentiate normal and abnormal musculoskeletal findings including age-related changes, and discuss appropriate methods for focused data collection. In addition, you'll describe appropriate techniques utilized for the musculoskeletal assessment, and develop a systematic framework for completing a musculoskeletal assessment in a timely manner. You're going to be able to list key examination findings that would require prompt medical referral, evaluate another health giver's ability to perform a comprehensive musculoskeletal assessment, and identify common normal and abnormal findings while performing a musculoskeletal assessment. You're going to need to pause these presentations frequently to review and discuss these uh, different points. And so we begin with looking at our diagnosis priority list. First on that list, and most important, are those problems that are related to the spine. Next, those conditions related to the head the thorax and the thoracic contents, the abdomen and the abdominal contents, the central nervous system, bones, the upper extremity, the lower extremities, nerves and muscles, the blood vascular system, and infections. Finally, any miscellaneous issues. In our differential diagnosis of joint problems and in every instance, we're going to use a mnemonic rabbit men, referred pain, arthritis, bone, bursa if one is present, tendon, muscle, effusion, nerve. Using this mnemonic we'll be able to identify what is causing the joint problem. Is the pain referred pain? Referred pain is pretty common. Read this definition or this information regarding referred pain. Pause the presentation to do so. Referred pain may include that that is common from a heart attack, with the pain spreading to the jaw and down the arm, or gallbladder pain referring to the top of the right shoulder. A diaphragm problem may be felt in the shoulder and the neck. Stomach problems may refer to the spine between the shoulder blades. Kidney pain may be felt in the groin area. And a problem in the throat may refer to an ear. Intestinal dysfunction may be felt in the middle or low back. Although related to messages sent by the nervous system telling the brain what area hurts, the reasons for referred pain are not completely known. Next, we would determine if the joint problem was because of an arthritis. Types of arthritis include ankylosing spondylitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, childhood arthritis, chronic back injury, Lyme disease, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, and Paget's disease. Some individuals will present with conditions that require further evaluation or examination that affect the joints, and you must be aware of these. Let's review some of them. This is Raynaud's phenomenon 
uh, Raynaud's phenomenon is an exaggeration of vasomotor response to cold or emotional stress. More specifically, it is a hyperactivation of the sympathetic system causing extreme vasoconstriction of the peripheral blood vessels leading to tissue hypoxia. Chronic, recurrent causes of Raynaud phenomena can result in atrophy of the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscle. In rare cases, it can cause ulceration and ischemic gangrene, in which case the extremity would need to be amputated. Along with urethritis, arthritis, conjunctivitis, the pustules seen here are indicative of Reiter's syndrome. Due to the systemic arthritic symptoms often seen, this disease is sometimes referred to as a seronegative spondyloarthropathy. Seronegative refers to the fact that these diseases are negative for rheumatoid factor, indicating a different pathophysiological mechanism of disease than what is commonly seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Diseases belonging to the seronegative spondyloarthropathies group include ankylosing spondylitis, Reiter's syndrome, enteropathic arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, Beckett's disease, and juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis Sjogren's syndrome Polymyalgia rheumatica is an inflammatory disorder involving pain and stiffness in the shoulder and usually also the hip. Symptoms uh, include pain and stiffness in both the shoulders and the neck. Polymyalgia rheumatica almost always occurs in those over 50 and the cause is unknown. Polymyalgia rheumatica may occur alone or with or before giant cell arthritis, which is also called temporal arteritis which is inflammation of blood vessels, usually in the head. Repetitive stress injury, such as occurs when one types and develops carpal tunnel syndrome, or other types of lifting injuries. Fibromyalgia, polymyositis and dermatomyositis are inflammatory myopathies, usually idiopathic. They're characterized by diffuse inflammation of strided muscle, expressed clinically by muscle fatigue, which has a proximal location in polymyositis, associated with a skin rash in dermatomyositis. Polymyositis and dermatomyositis are rare diseases that can occur at any age, usually between 5 and 15 years in children, and among adults between 40 and 60. This disease is twice as common in women than in men. Psoriatic arthritis. Reactive arthritis is defined as an arthritis that occurs at one to four weeks after an enteral or urogenital infection, especially in individuals with HLA-B27. Reactive arthritis has two particular aspects. Because it differs from infectious arthritis, in reactive arthritis, one would not see a culture of viable bacteria from the joint. There are some reactive arthritides which cannot be classified as seronegative. Scleroderma is a connective tissue disease that involves changes in the skin, blood vessels, muscles, and internal organs. It is a type of autoimmune disorder, a condition that occurs when the immune system attacks one's body tissues and the cause of scleroderma is unknown. Individuals with this condition have a buildup of collagen in the skin and internal organs. This buildup leads to symptoms of the disease and usually affects those 30 to 50 years of age. Women get scleroderma more often than men. Some individuals with scleroderma have a history of being near silica dust or polyvinyl chloride, but most do not. Widespread scleroderma can occur with other autoimmune diseases, including systemic lupus erythematosus and polymyositis. In such cases, the disorder is referred to as mixed connective disease. SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, is a long-term autoimmune disease that may affect the skin, joints, kidneys, brain, and other organs. It is an autoimmune disease which means that the body's immune system mistakenly attacks healthy tissue and 
destroys those tissues. This leads to long-term chronic inflammation. The underlying cause of autoimmune diseases is really not fully known. SLE is much more common in women than men and may occur at any age, but appears most often in those between the ages of 10 and 50. African Americans and Asians are affected more than others, and SLE may also be caused by certain drugs. What you're seeing here is the typical malar or butterfly rash of systemic lupus erythematosus. Gout is a kind of arthritis that occurs when uric acid builds up in blood and causes joint inflammation. Acute gout is a painful condition that typically affects one joint, and chronic gout is repeated episodes of pain and inflammation which may involve more than one joint. Gout is caused by having higher than normal levels of uric acid, and this can occur if you ingest foods that produce too much uric acid or if your body has a hard time getting rid of uric acid. If too much uric acid builds up in the fluid around the joints, then uric acid crystals form. These crystals cause the joint to swell and become inflamed and the exact cause of gout is really unknown. Gout may run in families. It's more common in men, in women after menopause, and those who drink alcohol. People who take certain medications such as hydrochlorothiazide and water pills may have higher levels of uric acid in the blood. Pseudogout is a joint disease that can cause attacks of arthritis. Like gout, the condition involves the formation of crystals in the joints. However, in pseudogout, the crystals are formed from a salt instead of uric acid. This collection of salt, called calcium pyrophosphate dihydride, or CPPD, is a buildup of these salt forms and crystals in the joints, and this leads to attacks of joint swelling and pain in the knees, wrists, ankles, and other joints. Among older adults, pseudogout is a common cause of sudden or acute arthritis in one joint, and pseudogout mainly affects the elderly. This is a picture of chronic arthritis caused by histoplasma capsulatum. Uh, infectious arthritis, or, or septic arthritis, is inflammation of a joint due to a bacterial or fungal infection. Septic arthritis that is due to the bacteria that cause gonorrhea has different symptoms. Septic arthritis develops when bacteria or any tiny disease-causing organism spread through the bloodstream to a joint. These may also occur when the joint is directly infected with a microorganism from injury or during surgery. The most common sites for this type of infection are the knee and the hip. Most cases of septic arthritis, acute septic arthritis, are caused by bacteria such as staph and strep. Chronic septic arthritis, which is less common, is caused by organisms such as mycobacterium tuberculosis, and candida. Next, we want to determine if the uh, joint problem is because of bone. Bursa, if one is present. Is the pain tendinous? Is this a muscular problem? Is there an effusion? Is this nerve pain? A mnemonic to help us remember the common forms of bursitis is HAMS. Prepatellar bursitis, or housemaid's knee. Retrocalcaneal bursitis, or Achilles tendon bursitis. Alecranon bursitis, miner's elbow, sometimes called student's elbow. And subdeltoid, or subacromial bursitis, bursitis of the shoulder. A mnemonic to help us to remember the menisci, the locations of the menisci, is squat, sternoclavicular joint, knee, wrist, acromioclavicular joint, glenohumeral joint, hip, and temporomandibular joint. Our physical exam routine will begin with our mnemonic hippyrone, 
History of Present Illness. And we will use the OPQRSTUV model. The onset. Was the onset acute, subacute, or chronic? Provoking. What makes the pain better? What makes the pain worse? The quality of the pain. Is it stabbing, dull, crushing, burning? Does the pain radiate? What is the specific site of the pain? What is the timing of the pain? Is it worse in the morning, at night? Is there an underlying motive for your patient complaining of pain? And make sure that you record vital signs. Temperature, pulse, respiration, height, weight, and blood pressure. Our inspection includes looking for obvious deformities, palpation for inflammation, percussion when indicated, incidental fortuitous or chance findings, range of motion, and our orthopedic exam which includes specific tests for each joint. We'll discuss these in more detail as we do the individual modules. Conduct our neurological examination at cord level and examine related areas. This is the Hippie-Rhone model that we'll use in every instance of our physical exam routine. This completes the introductory module of our musculoskeletal assessment.